Good morning guys, my name is Trevor. Welcome back to the Arctivate YouTube channel. Before we get di uh, dive down deep today um, with our Bible verse that we're going to read, chapter I mean, chapter, uh, today is 9-11 and I just want to take a second like I do every year to just remember those who are lost. Let's never forget what happened 9-11-2001. And I mean, I was just a kid in school, and many of many of us were, many of us were working, many of us were maybe just little kids and don't remember, or maybe we're kids and well, we weren't born yet. <laughs> so we're gonna roll that intro, and right after, we're gonna have a little moment of silence. Okay, we're gonna have our little moments this moment of silence and I'm gonna bow I'm gonna actually bow my head and pray. <laughs> Amen. How about that timing? Before we get to Genesis, we're going to read our devotional book, Day by Day Devotions for Dad. And today it is What the Next Generation Sees. Each generation tells of your faithfulness to the next. Isaiah 38, 19. You've heard the statistics. Lifeway Christians, Christian Resources report reports that 75% 75, 75 of young people leave church in their late teens and do not later reconnect. Barra, Bernan, Bernan, Barna research tells us a majority of 20-somethings, 61% of today's young adults, have been churched at one point during their teens, teen years, but they are now spiritually disengaged. Which is kind of crazy to think about because today we just heard um, in Trail Life that 7 out of 10 will go off to college and disconnect and not reconnect with, with their faith with God. That's kind of heartbreaking. So let's get back, back into here. Without getting bogged down in numbers and percentages... There is a real sense that young adults today do not see personal value in following the faith convictions of their mothers and dads. They see little evidence that having a re relationship with Jesus is worth the effort. The, que the question worth asking is why? Fellow dads, I think it might be our fault. Too often, our outward appearance does not reflect our dependence on God. When good things happen, we love to take credit for for them. We love to take credit. When bad things happen, we fix them. In private, we might reveal our brokenness and need for a savior. Behind closed doors, we will pray, seek wise spiritual counsel, and surrender, even tearfully, to God's will. But in public, the persona seen by our kids, we rarely acknowledge our need for God. As a result, our children do not see how he has been working in us, for us, and through us. What about you? If your grown child steps away from church for a while, don't beat yourself up. Think back to spiritual turning points in their lives. Did they ever sincerely turn their life over to Christ? Was there a solid season, uh, season during which they were led by God's Spirit? Then keep praying, keep praying an open door, keep an open door, and trust that God will be faithful in drawing your child back to Him. If your son or daughter has never accepted Jesus as their Savior, then pray even harder. Pray for Christian peers and mentors to come in their, into their lives and work to keep our, your family relationship strong. Badgering and harping won't help, it only hurts. Humbling, let, humbly 
Letting them see God make a difference in your life will. That's a lot, but very, very true. Which is why I am very thankful that God has given me the opportunity to do what I do every single day, which is make it known that He's the one helping us in life, that He's the one to take credit for these wins for, for everything. So let's go ahead and dive into Genesis, read our chapter, and then we will catch you guys. Bye. Oh, bye. bye. Again, real quick, I want you guys to know that a link to this Bible is in my description. You guys can follow along in the same exact Bible that I am reading here. And now we are in Genesis chapter 4, Cain and Abel. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain was a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your face fallen? If you do well, if you do well, you will not be accepted. And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. It is Its desire is contrary to you but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother. And when they, they were in the field, when, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground and now you are cursed from the ground which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand when you work the ground it shall no longer yield to you its strength you shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth cain said to the lord my punishment is greater than i can bear behold you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. <laughs> then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall, be, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, Least any man, any who find him, found him. Oh my goodness. Least any who found him should attack. Then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land nord of Nod, of Nod, land of Nod, east of Eden. Sorry, my, <clears throat> my allergies are giving my booty. Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. Enoch? When he built a city, he called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. <laughs> to Enoch, Enoch, was born Irad, and Irad fathered Majel, 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 and Majel fathered Meth, uh, meth so, so. <laughs> I am not good with any of these names, just heads up. And Michelle, M Methel, Sh Methishel, I don't know, fathered Lamech. And Lamech took two wives. The name of one was Ada. And the name of the other, Zillah. 
so huh Ada Bor Jabal he was the father was the father of those who dwell in the tents in tents and have livestock his brother's name was Jabal he was the father of all of those who play the lyre and pipe Zola also bore Tubla, Tubla Cain he was the forger of all instruments of bronze and iron. The sister of Tubal Cain was Namaha. Namaha? <laughs> Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zilla, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, Lamech, listen to what I say. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. If Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lamech is seventy-sevenfold. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named his name, called his name Seth, for she said, God has appointed for me another offspring instead of Abel for Cain killing him. To Seth also a son was born, and he called his name Enosh. Not Enosh, but Enosh. At the time, people began to call upon the name of the Lord. And that brings us to chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. Whew. Thanks for bearing with me on pronounce, pronunciation, pronouncing some of these names. If you know... Uh, how to pronounce them i guess i could i could uh look them up beforehand that might be good for the next one <laughs> you can let me know in the comments too but guys it's real easy pick up the bible read along with me read faster than me but understand it that's the main point understand it and so anyways i w thank you guys so much and uh you know my uh thank you jesus Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's amazing. I hope that you all had a wonderful day. And I'm, I'm still remembering those that were lost. And explaining to my kids that tragic day. Even though they do, they learn about it in a school, which makes me very happy. I'm very glad that they, that this is something that they still learn. And personally, I think there's more to it than we know and that's I'll just leave it at that there are still lives lost and and you know God's may God's will be done so anyways thank you guys so much we appreciate it smash that thumbs up don't forget to click the red subscribe button I hope that you're enjoying no ads on these videos because you know what these videos are all for God for God's glory and I, I feel like this is a way for me to help disciple because I'm a disciple I'm to be discipled I'm still learning and I, I hope that one of these or all of these help you also get through the Bible my favorite book the most important book in my life right here the Bible God's Word that's what it is we'll catch you tomorrow in another vlog so have a great night and God bless don't ever give up, God is here with you Yeah, You are a child, nothing but love is true Just got it fixed in view, keep your eyes on the prize That's life everlasting, only through Jesus Christ he